people always ask these questions that they expect to hear like an ultimate answer to like what's your favorite food or what's your favorite song like i'm supposed to pick out one song from all of the songs i've ever heard in my life as the one that i've listened to the most with anime at the very least i can actually pick out one as my favorite of all time of course there are a lot of shows that i absolutely adore you can just go to my analyst profile and see what my favorite shows are for yourself the link to my analyst profile is in the channel description page even among all of them mob psycho 100 is my favorite show of all time particularly season two of mob psycho 100 season one was incredible um, like the story and the writing was really great. The story always subverted your expectations in uh, like plausible ways. It was always really fun. And of course, the visuals were out of this world. It was absolutely breathtaking. But it was shackled by having to set up the world and the characters via exposition. You always have some sort of a limitation when it comes to that, which is why the later seasons of most shows will be better than the first season if of course everything else that made season one great is still here and with season two it was just that season two was immediately starting with the focus entirely on the characters with episode one two and three entirely focused on building mob and reagan as characters particularly mob mob's development in season two's episode one two three was more than he had in the entirety of season one and it was such an incredible change of pace that i enjoyed a lot. It was the one thing that was missing out of season one. It was what was holding back season, Mob Psycho 100 as a whole from being that special, incredible show. And without these three episodes, the Mogami arc wouldn't have hit as hard. Even though Mogami arc is like the big set piece that you're going to be look at and be like, wow, what the fuck did I just witness? That wouldn't have hit as hard if not for episode one, two, three and all the development that Mob had in those episodes. And even though like these episodes one, two, three, are like self-contained episodes that are like a one shot that tell their own story and do it perfectly. They still progress the story and progress the characters in a way that helps the rest of the episodes. Like in episode four, uh, Mob uses like an out of body experience to combat uh, Mogami who's entered a girl's body. This out of body experience is something that he learned in episode, I forgot the exact number, but it's the one where they're cleaning up like the urban myths and stuff. That was a self-contained episode, but it flows seamlessly into the rest of the show. And all of the development that Mob undergoes during the Mogami arc is what causes the Reagan arc to occur. And Reagan arc is my favorite arc in all of Mob Psycho 100. There are no big set pieces. There's no insane Sakuga. It was just really well written character dynamic between Reagan and Mob and to flow seamlessly between all of these different types of arcs and self-contained episodes while also building towards an actual finale is just absolutely got tier writing which one is capable of and season three seems to be doing just that the first episode of season three really fucking good looking it's like a self-contained episode with the theme being Mob trying to figure out what to do in the future and this is why we can relate so well to Mob. Like if I was in Mob's shoes, I would abuse the shit out of my powers, make a career path for myself with it. But if Mob had his powers removed, then that is the most relatable character ever. And that's how Mob is trying to live, like without his powers. Season two already was a really good self-contained story. Like if season three never released, it would have been actually fine because season two was such a good ending point. Now, of course, um, a, a lot of mob fans would just be like a rabid middle-aged Indian men just foaming at their mouth, looking at women, trying to see if they can get a peek on any bit of their skin over knee level. It's also the same experience I'm going through right now with cyberpunk edgerunners. I want more of it, but they can't really do anything with it because season one was such a good self-contained story. But with Mob Psycho 100, I'm glad that we're getting a season three and i'm sure it's gonna tie into the first two seasons really well obviously and there is of course the mystery of the thing inside mob the question mark question mark question mark percentage thingo so there is stuff that is unexplored and i'm glad that we are going to be exploring that here with all of mob's awesomeness that's it let's get right into season three episode one's breakdown uh, first i want to go and look at some of the sakura clips in the scene from sakura Buru. I guess I'm just gonna watch the episode and then just try to guess what kind of animators worked on it. So anyway, um, the two names stood out the most to me. One is Koki Fujimoto 
and the other one is Toshiki Sato. In my previous videos, uh, when I was talking about Chainsaw Man and Jutsu Kaisen and all that stuff, um, I mentioned that Koki Uchimoto has never really worked on Mob, so I don't expect him to be working here. But he did. Like, he's credited for episode 1 of season 3 of Mob Psycho 100, so I guess he's going to be juggling between this um, and Chainsaw Man, while also working on Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, which was in production at the same time as these two shows, which is crazy. Or maybe he just worked for this one single scene, whatever the scene was. I don't know which scene he animated. I have some guesses, but that's about it. Toshiki Sato did animate a scene though, and I think I know which scene, but then again, I'm not sure. Like that scene that I think was Toshiki Sato could also have been Koki Fujimoto. There was also Mio Sato, the animator who paints on glass and then animates using that. Just an incredible technique. She is awesome. She worked in season one and two. She also solo animated the ending of season one. She's not credited on Anime News Network for this, but I figured it out. It's her who's animating in this episode because there are only so many animators who do paint on glass animation, right? Yeah, there's there's one. That's Mio Sato. So yeah. Yuki Sato also worked on this episode. And no, not the freelance, hyper-talented Yuki Sato action animator who worked on Jujutsu Kaisen and Haikyuu. This is a different Yuki Sato, and this is not the Yuki Sato part of Studio Comet who worked on Mob Psycho Season 1. No, this is another, another Yuki Sato. This Yuki Sato is part of Asahi Productions, and yeah, this is, I think, her debut work in Mob Psycho 100, which I don't know what she animated, but it's probably good considering the entire episode was really good. So let's start with the opening. Another banger. This might be my favorite opening yet, which is crazy. I don't. I didn't think anything could top 99.9. .9. It's it's super trippy visuals. I like the uh, digital kind of background use here. My OBS just crashed. So let's just talk about everything that I just talked about for the last 30 minutes again. Yay! This is so much fun. I'll do it because uh, I have to do it. But anyway, for the opening, what did I say? I talked about how fluid these few segments were, where, yeah, these segments, the slow walk cycles done in slow motion, absolutely gorgeous. And even just this small scene of Reagan just tilting his head slowly upwards. So cool. So much effort put into that small tilt. And this FX animation also awesome. The slow walk cycle with Ritsu, again, great. And here, the art direction is really cool. I don't know if they are using actual real life images of buildings or if this is just painted on. The reason I'm confused whether it's like that or not is because they used real life images in the past. They used real life photography and just used textures on top of that to fit the art style. But here, yeah, honestly, that could be, that could be real life images. They look really cool. And Yoshimichi Kamida, of course, the character designer, chief animation director, the one who makes Mob Psycho 100, what Mob Psycho 100 is. And here's just a really cool juxtaposition segment. This is heavily cartoonish. The, like the squiggly wobbly lines and stuff. We do that here too with Dimple. And then we immediately switch to this like almost photorealistic drawing of like a sound box. I don't know what this is actually called. I call it a sound box because yeah, I'm, I'm not the most tech savvy person out there, especially with recording items and stuff. I'm recording with a $7 mic and I'm recording the camera that I'm using is literally my phone. Yeah. And the, light source that I'm using is sunlight. And this is the best animated single cut of the entire episode. The super fluid slow walk cycle accompanied by the gorgeous lightning animation and the debris looks really good. And the bubble that he's in, like the e ESP bubble. It doesn't just look like he's inside a bubble. It looks like the bubble is swirling, if you can see here. And the reason it looks like that is because of the way the effects on the bubble is animated with these jagged lines that flow around the character. Really well done. Looks absolutely fucking amazing. My favorite cut from this opening. Again, all of these sequences where Mob's head is there and the eyes just keep shifting. And then we switch to Mob's eyes, but then we sh shift to other people again. And this is um, Mio Sato's animation. I think, what episode is this from? I think from, this is the eyes of the, one of the claw members who can show hallucinations. But yeah, this is paint on glass animation. If you can, if I can zoom in here, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, if you can, if you look closely, you can actually see the fingerprint smudges here. I'll zoom in even more. You can actually see some of the fingerprint smudges. There's another example in the episode itself, which I'll point out. But yeah, uh, the reason you can see the fingerprint smudges and stuff is because the way paint on glass animation is done is by painting on glass and then slowly pushing the paint in different directions 
to make the scene flow, make the scene look animated, which is a ridiculous amount of work, which is why it's so incredible. I do believe that part of our appreciation in art lies in the difficulty in how you make it, which is why I never like modern art. Like, oh, it's the just paint splashed in different directions. It's actually really fucking deep. Maybe it is, but there's no effort in creating something like that. There is a lot of effort in creating this. So I will just end up, I always just end up appreciating stuff that has more effort put into it. And paint on glass animation is like the peak of effort. It's right up there with like 2D background animation with how difficult it is to do and the sheer level of talent and imaginative power that it takes to make something like this. Like Mio Sato has to know what the scene will look like while she's slowly pushing paint in all directions, which is ridiculous to think about. Every time I put myself in the shoes of artists, that's when I can truly appreciate their work. And it's not just artists. Every time I put myself in the shoes of other people, that just makes me appreciate people in general. And I recommend you guys do that too. Like if you dislike some people, put yourself in their shoes. If you like some people, put yourself in their shoes. Try to relate more to people. Try to show empathy, sort of like a life lesson there, which <laughs> honestly I learned from Mob Psycho 100. There's so much stuff that I learned from Mob Psycho 100. It's insane. I love the show so much. Finally, this lot of hands animation, a lot of focus on hands, really cool here. And this just looks like straight out of Jujutsu Kaisen. This looks like Mahito's domain expansion. And the way the hand is poking out here, looks like Shingo Yamashita's storyboarded scene. And boom. This is just a single cut that shows just how much the creators care about the show. Just mob slowly progressing in age. Animated in twos, his clothing changing. Such a fluid way of doing that. I, I got teary-eyed when I watched it for the first time. I'm, I'm also getting teary-eyed right now. It's not just that, just the passion of the creators, right? Studio Bones on the side switches to one. One, the creator of Mob Psycho 100 and One Punch Man. That one cut just shows how much love the creators of the show have for the product that they're creating. And that level of love that they have and passion that they have, that is contagious which is another reason I love Mob Psycho 100 so much, because if the creators love their show so much, of course I love it. It's also the reason I don't like Tokyo Revengers, because how am I supposed to like something that the animation studio clearly has no respect or love for? Also other reasons why I don't like Tokyo Revengers, plenty of them, but that's one of the main reasons. And yeah, the rest of the people working here, Warner Bros. Japan LLC, also having their name proudly being put up there after the suits over at Warner Bros decided to remove all of its clips from Sakugaboru, which is the worst thing they could do to their product, but they did it anyway. I, I will keep saying that, by the way. I will never stop holding that against Warner Bros. I will keep saying that with every single chance I get to talk about it. And if that gets old, I don't even give a fuck. The subs for this episode, really well done. I don't know if these are, these are fan subs. This might be fan subs. Uh, but yeah, like they made an entire page here with the subs laid out perfectly well. Uh, this is the kind of subs that I wanted for um, Komi-san. But yeah, what we got from Netflix was dog shit. Fortunately, the fan subs were really good. Yeah, really good subtitles here. Theme of this episode, as I said before, I think I said before, or maybe I'm getting deja vu from, you know, the recording that I did record for the entire episode. This is one of the standard cuts of this episode. If I had to say how many standout cuts, yeah, there are two standout action cuts in this episode. This is one of them. And yeah, this is the fluid background animation here. Let me remove the subtitles. Super fluid background animation with camera movement as well. Like this tambourines. I call them tambourines. I don't know what this actually are. I'm not a very athletic person either, but yeah. Um, you go, you sway from left to right and as you go up and of course, really good smears here to show the movement. Yeah, and cool perspective shift and she just bounces off on from on top of it. Really fluid um, cloth animation and hair animation. Yeah, just a really fluid sequence. And this is a really well storyboarded scene. Like we look at the figurine here, it's not a figurine, like more like, like a statue. And then we go into the statue. We get this perspective from inside the statue. So now the camera, it's not a real camera, but not only is the camera in there, 
the microphone is also in there because the sound feels like it's coming from in there. Again, this co really cool FX animation for this really short comical segment. It's just silly. <laughs> like lightning going through Serzawa's head. Did it have to be that well animated? No. And the effects, they look really good there. It's crazy. It reminds me of um, uh, the animators over at Ufortable going absolutely all the fuck out uh, for Zenitsu's sequence. But yeah, those were some of the best effects animation in that episode and in Demon Slayer that excessively utilizes digital effects, even in the action sequences, you got really good looking 2D effects for like a comical sequence. This just reminds me of that, except in Mob Psycho's case, all effects are 2D effects. There are no digital effects. There is digital compositing though, which is what you see here. Like this is digital and the compositing work is really cool here. Like this is one of the shots that uh, was pointed out as being CGI by one of the incredible minds over at Twitter, but it's clearly not CGI, it's all 2D with some digital compositing on top of it, but that is compositing, it's not animation. And again, some really cool effects animation over here. Reagan just looking at this, it, it's funny to me because what he's seeing is just a guy doing this because he can't really see anything that's happening. And that's just funny. Really cool effects animation with there and the explosion, the timing with the explosion, boom. Really cool. I love it. Another excessively high quality cut here. Look at that. Super cool um, camera movement from the bottom to his head as he's rising up. Really good character acting. And again, really cool looking movements there. And the background they're using here is also pretty sick. It's the classic speed line background that they use for most cartoony shows. Um, and that shifts seamlessly, dissolves into like an actual background and the background movement with respect to the character is also really good. The compositing work with the backgrounds and the art direction has always been really good for Mob Psycho 100. Like the insanity that happens in like the Mogami episode and stuff. The background is never alien. It never feels like it's not part of the action, which is just really fantastic work. And the way Shimazaki teleports, that too, like in episode 11, the way Shimazaki teleports and the background always keeps up, fantastic work. Compositing can be more than just Adobe Premiere After Effects and flashy lights and colors. This is also compositing, which is what Jujutsu Kaisen, the show, had suffered with. But Mob Psycho has always been really co consistent with that. And of course, so fucking ridiculous and cool. Just because it is Big Bang, the background shift to like a space with shift to space with planets and stuff because he's mentioned Big Bang. So of course we've got to do that, right? It's so goofy. I love it so much. And it's not even that this thing here, the broken hand, that's not even just a still image that's being zoomed into the camera. It's fully animated. Even his hand is fully animated. As it comes closer, you can see that there's more line work being added that was not there in the previous frames. As the hand comes closer, you see line work being added, you see shadows coming in. So well done. And again, a hyper exaggerated face. It looks like it straight, came straight out of Studio Trigger, probably because these are Yoshimichi Kamido's ideas. And again, with the theme of what you want to do in the future being utilized here, um, I, I do think Dimple is going to be a pretty big component of this season because I watched the trailer. I did watch the first trailer. I didn't watch any of the trailers after that. WB released like a thousand fucking trailers. I only watched the first one and it does look like Dimple's going to be a pretty big component of it. And I also love the scene because all of these guys are muscle heads so they have really poor ranks. But then there's this one guy who's two, rank two in 350, just out of nowhere, which is, I like that, right? One would think of doing stuff like that because there is absolutely no generalization when it comes to one's characters. That's what makes them feel so real. And if just because they're muscle heads, yeah, most of them have poor ranks, which is what statistically probably would be like, but there's just one guy who has rank two and Onigawara wants to be a manga artist and Musashi Goda, my, one of my favorite characters in anime. I'm not kidding. I also absolutely love the interactions between Mob and Mezato-san. This is exactly Mob's point with how he wants to grow, right? Uh, like, she looks at someone divine here, but she's only looking at Mob's side that has all the powers. Other than that, she doesn't give a, the slightest fuck about Mob. And that part 
the part that she doesn't give a slightest fuck about, that's the part that Mob's trying to improve. So I really like this dynamic between Mizato and Mob. I also really like this eye catch. Season 2 of Mob Psycho 100 had some of the best eye catches. They fit into the story really well. They also sometimes showed us bits of the story that they just, you know, sometimes they just show off screen. It happens off screen. But even the stuff that happens off screen, they showed in the uh, us in the eye catches, which was really cool. The, the, so fucking disgusting conveyed by the animation. But what conveys the disgust even better is the sound effects. Yeah, I hope that was playing. The sound of something sticky being stuck and unstuck continuously when he's putting his teeth together. It's so disgusting. And sound design is really good here. Art direction is also really good. Fuck, that's, that's a disgusting house. It looks exactly like Anomaly's apartment. Again, all of the smoke done with full t 2D. Um, if, if this was affordable doing this, the smoke would be digital. Again, not saying that one form is superior to the other, but just the dedication of the mob team that they want to do everything with 2D. Oh, I found this hooker and I was paying her to fuck me. But when I was no longer paying her, which is the only reason she's sticking around with me, she left me. That's crazy. <laughs> and Reagan's face. Yeah, I know what kind of woman that is. That's, that's not a girlfriend. <laughs> I love this face. It's so good. Just remove every bit of detail from the face. It's crazy that they can do that. The same idea, right? Uh, like, you need a goofy face as like a punchline for a joke here. That's all it is. It's a goofy face for a punchline of a joke. They can do that by either using super simplistic faces like this or by using super detailed faces as well. So my legacy, not really a good legacy to have. It's like what Jesse Pinkman said to Walter White, a meth empire. It's not really a all that impressive of a legacy to have. And this is even worse, it's a garbage, you know? Yeah, cockroach. Look at how de <laughs> Look at how detailed that cockroach is. And the way it scuttles around is so good. Like the smeary hands. <laughs> yeah, he never had hair. And Sarah so was just trying to absorb all of this seriously. And again, this scene. This is unironically one of the best cuts in this episode. Why is that so good? Uh, cigarette lighting Sakuga is a division of Sakuga that was popularized by Yutaka Nakamura with a scene in Concrete Revolution that is still the best cigarette lighting scene ever. But since then, it's like everyone is trying to animate cigarette lighting as fluidly as possible. Attack on Titan in the final season, for example, the part one, that is the one that struggled with Sakuga still found time to animate Zeke lighting his cigarette in a very fluid and well animated way. It's just so good. Most of this animated in twos, but the cigarette be having um, the thing dissolved from on top. I don't know about cigarettes, all right? I don't know what's happening here. The cigarette being lit, I'll just say that. I don't smoke, so I don't know. That is done in once. And the compositing effects to show the light lit up portion also really good. This absolutely does not fit in with the rest of the art style. This looks photorealistic, the flame and the cigarette. But I mean, who gives a shit? It's cool. So well animated for that single cut of a man lighting a cigarette. This is him being in his 20s and he's already bolting. <laughs> and the compositing shifts here to like a greenish filter to then show us the monster. Fuck, that's a disgusting looking monster. And here's Mio Sato's paint on glass animation. Yeah, there it is. That is definitely paint on glass animation. Yeah, it's even more fluid than the kind of paint on glass animation that she's done before. But like with uh, the edges here, you can clearly see her fingerprint smidges. And paint on glass animation is like the coolest form of animation. I want an entire anime in this style, even though that would be like impossible to make with how much work that is. Regan uses another special move. And again, this is the kind of shit that you would only see in Mob Psycho 100 or other trigger shows because they're literally holding on a smear frame that shows multiples. Like there are no, there's no three Reagans here, right? That's only one Reagan, but you see multiples of him in the background and you see multiples of his hand too. And it's a still image that's showing the multiples. This is the kind of thing that people post on social media and call bad animation because huh, there are no, it's supposed to be three Reagans on my screen right now. That is bad animation. 
And yeah, I would usually defend that by saying it's supposed to flow with the animation. So it's supposed to look good. You're taking it out of context by just using it as an image, right? But here it is being used as an image and something like this will only be done by Mob Psycho staff or Studio Trigger staff. Really well storyboard is shot. I love the angle here. And this is the best sequence of the episode. I absolutely adore the background animation here. Yeah, that is excessively fluid background animation. The background is in 2D, by the way. The entire camera rotation, an animator had to draw the background frame by frame. First thought this was Shin Ogasawa because he did something very similar for season one of Mob Psycho 100 with just hyper fluid background animation. Sort of Canada style effects with the way the jagged shapes and stuff. Does not have the Canada style snappy timing, but it does look sort of like Toshi Kisato's timing. So I wouldn't be surprised if this was Toshi Kisato. And yeah, this cut is just so fucking gorgeous. The background is so well animated. Gosh, background animation is so sick. It's so moving so slowly. I'm sure that whoever animated this animated the background first and then animated the foreground. Uh, and then the compositing team just mixed it together because yeah, that would be the easier way of animating this, honestly, because um, technically some of the animations being wasted here because Mob's foreground model is covering some of the beautiful background animation. But I mean, it's a, that's how the shot needs to be played out, right? So it's not really a sacrifice. But here you can really see the compositing effects uh, shining literally on, on the outline of both of these characters. Mobs is very different. It's kind of, kind of similar to Serizawa's, but it is still different. Serizawa is more like powder, but Mobs looks like glass. Also, the effects are really cool. All these things flowing around in the super background is also really, super foreground is also very good. Effects animation, great. It's not really rotation. There's a cut there, right? He looks up and then there's a cut. And some extraordinarily fucking gorgeous effects. Could be Toshi Kisato. Yeah. Could, should be him. I'm guessing it's him. Maybe it's Koki Fujimoto. Who knows? Who, how can we know? I don't have the Sakuga eyes to discern um, whose animation that is, but yeah. And we even see the windows getting popped, right? Yeah, the windows, I thought this was just art direction, just painted on, but these windows are animated. As you can see, the shadows are changing on it, or the reflection is changing on it, and ultimately they fucking explode. Sick, sick sequence. Best sequence in season three so far, which is an important thing to say because season three is going to be filled with some of the most imp impressive Sakugo that we'll get to see. So it's Chainsaw Man. Chainsaw Man's also going to do that. He, got, he says he's going to better his life, but then he sees five volumes of Shonen Jump and then just carries that to his house. So yeah, we know how the, his life's going to go. <laughs> yeah, again, super cartoonish, just pencil animation. There's no, literally no c uh, coloring or compositing done here, which is, this is something similar with Mob Psycho season one. Too close to me too. Hit too close to me too, bro. Yeah, that's just how it's gonna be. I I'm at a stage where both the future is totally scary because I have no idea what's gonna be like, and the past is just too painful to look back on because it's so fucking cringy. Yeah, uh, as far as career choices, let's stick with the theme of the episode. I want to be a YouTuber. I bet that was a surprise. But yeah, I want to be a YouTuber. I want to build uh, my audience, an audience who not only cares about what I make, but also cares about me. And that's the kind of point of this channel. I'm just doing whatever the hell I want, stuff that I like. And if I can build an audience out of it, if I can make a living out of it, that would be the best thing ever. Not because I'm earning money to live my life, but because I will be living my life doing something I love. So I'm already really grateful that I've al almost have 1k subs. I never thought I would hit that landmark even. It's the biggest achievement of my life. And yeah, I'll make a big thank you video when I do hit 1k subs, which should be pretty soon. Yeah, I may hit that subscribe if you haven't already. Yeah, uh, this episode hit a bit too close to home, which is what Mopsako does. It changes people's lives. It may forces you to think about what you're doing with your life. It's not just a piece of entertainment. It's really good. I love it. I also love this. I love Reagan being supportive of Mob. And then <laughs> he says, Mob, you can do whatever you want whenever you want to do it. So Mob's just like, thank you very much. And we hold this sh shot for <laughs> that much time. Mob said, I'm, I might not work here in the future, but the future could also mean 
like the next minute. <laughs> it's the same thing like uh, that one did with One Punch Man where the committee hero association, they're saying, within the next six months, there's going to be a world ending disaster that we need to prepare for. And Saitama's like, in six months, that could mean it could happen tomorrow or even today, right? Similar idea being used here. I love how they always subvert our expectations. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, that was Mob Psychos 100, Season 3, Episode 1. I loved it a lot. I mean, it's Mob Psycho 100. Of course I love it. It's, it's peak anime. It's the best show ever made. And if you disagree with me, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying you have bad taste. And yeah, that's all there is to it. This is my favorite show ever made. It's the best show ever made. And it's looking like Season 3 is going to have a great start. I thought it would be hurt by Chainsaw Man but this is episode one and it's only going to get better from here and episode one also looks fucking incredible as usual so I'm not scared about anything this is going to be another masterpiece of a season can't wait for more and the next episode analysis that I'm going to be making is probably for Chainsaw Man but of course I'm going to um, make the Cyberpunk Edgerners review video first it's ed I'm editing that now so stay tuned for that um, it's more more of a bigger video, which is why I decided to just release this first. But that's about it. I love the show. Fantastic episode. If you like this video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike and tell me down in the comment section why you disliked the video. If you want to see more of it, subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you soon. Thanks for the views. Cleaning up like the urban myths and stuff. That was a self-contained episode. Fuck.